This young man, whose full name is Thirichit Trambalam, or who is usually called Pajam, worked as a food delivery man. That day, Pajam got an order from his friend. Coincidentally, his friend was having a party and invited him to join, but he refused because there was a girl there named Anusha. Anusha was a girl that Pajam liked since fifth grade. He couldn't confess his feelings because he was just a delivery man. Later that day, when Pajam was taking a break, a fellow delivery man came and asked him to break up a fight between their friends and a campus student. Pajam, who had never fought, was forced to help his friend, but because of the incident, he and his friend had to end up at the police station. The inspector named Mila Cannon slapped Pajam and then released them all. Upon arriving home, his grandfather asked what happened to his face. Suddenly, Inspector Mila Cannon showed up, who turned out to be Pajam's father. His grandfather told him to ask his father why he was the only one beaten, but he refused outright. They haven't talked to each other for years, all because of an incident in the past. His family life was very boring, and if it weren't for his grandfather, he would have left his house long ago. On the other hand, a woman named Shubana was seen. She was Pajam's best friend since childhood. She was working in a software company. She said that she got promotion at the Canadian branch. Last night, she tried to call Pajam to ask for advice, but he didn't answer the call because he was at the police station. Shubana had a dilemma. It was his dream to work overboard, but she couldn't leave his family. That day, when Pajam was filling up with petrol, Anusha suddenly greeted him. The fact that she still remembered him made him very happy. She then asked for Pajam's number. After that, Pajam told him about the incident to Shabana. Shabana, who knew about this, reminded Pajam not to get too excited. Maybe she was just considering him as nothing but a delivery man. Not long after, Pajam got a call from Anusha, asking him to deliver her order. Without hesitation, he happily agreed. When he arrived and gave the ordered food, Anusha stopped him from leaving. Pajam thought she wanted to talk with him, but instead, Anusha gave him tip money, which Pajam immediately refused and left. Shobana, who found out about this, just laughed while telling Pajam that she had predicted it. He saw him as nothing but a delivery man. The next day, Neela Cannon, who had just returned, gave his salary to his father and told his father to deposit the money into Pajam's account, but instead, his father called Pajam and told him to buy four bottles of beer. That night, Pajam was delivering an order, but when he got to the address, he got the wrong address. By chance, inside the person's room, Pajam saw a child who looked like he was being kidnapped, and without wasting more time, Pajam immediately reported the incident to the police station. After receiving the report, the police acted quickly and managed to save the life of the little girl. The kidnapper, Gopal, was holding a grudge against Neela Cannon after arresting him. This incident, on the other hand, made Neela Cannon famous and was highlighted by a lot of media. He also received a promotion from his superiors. Knowing this, Pajan was very angry because it was his father who claimed the fame, instead of him who found the kidnapper first. That ignited Neela Cannon's anger and suddenly beat Pajan. Couldn't accept what his father had just done to him, so he brought up the cause of his mother and sister's death and blamed his father for the death of them. That same night, Neela Cannon decided to go to his office even though he had no schedule, while Pajan decided to sleep on the rooftop while lamenting his fate. Shortly after, he got a message from Anusha, inviting him to meet at the cafe tomorrow. This made Pajam very happy. The next day, Shobana tried several times to call Pajam, but he didn't answer the phone and made her very upset. She then met Pajam's grandfather who told her that since morning, Pajam had been dressed neatly and seemed to be going on a date with a very beautiful woman. On the other hand, Pajam was at a cafe with Anusha. Anusha apologized for her behavior before and gave him a hug and a kiss on his cheek. Meanwhile, Shobana was annoyed because Pajam didn't tell her about the date. She was angry and said that she didn't want to meet or call him again. Shortly after, she got a message from Pazim, saying that his bike had broken and asked her to pick him up. Finally, Shobana decided to pick him up. On their way home, Pazim kept apologizing for not telling Shobana that he had a date with Anusha, but Shobana was too annoyed by him. Pazim then told her about Anusha's treatment of him. Hearing this made Shobana calm down. The next day, Pajam asked Shobana for advice on what to do with Anusha. Shobana urged him to confess his love to Anusha, so right after that, Pajam met Anusha and without hesitation, confessed to her. Anusha said that what she did yesterday was not an action of affection, but more of an apology. She told him to think of her as nothing more than a friend. She then pretended to receive a phone call and left him. Pajam was very disappointed. He went home and told Shobana everything. Shobana, who heard this, really felt sorry for him and tried to cheer him up. The next day, Shobana's brother showed up and gave Pajam a cake, saying that it was a sign that a girl had accepted his love. He knew it was Shobana who had the idea. He took the cake and threw the cake on Shobana's brother's face. He then went to scold Shobana and thought that she was making fun of him. Shobana then said that she wasn't intending to do that, 
but instead, she did that because she couldn't bear to see him sad. She also said that Anusha wasn't the one for him. They then went to the cinema and saw Anusha with her friends. Seeing Pajim's presence, they started insulting him. Shobana, who didn't accept their insult to Pajim, immediately scolded them all. But because of this, Anusha's friends insulted her back. Pajim, who saw this, could only remain silent. When they got home, Shobana was disappointed with Pajim. She was defending him, but he didn't do the same for her. Pajim said that she just didn't want to escalate the problem and didn't like the fuss, but Shobana didn't accept his apology. This made Pajim angry, he said that nobody understands him in the world and told her to leave him alone. At home, he remembered Shobana, which then made him lose focus and accidentally damaged his father's uniform while ironing it. When Neela Kanan returned home, he found out that his clothes were damaged. She was very angry because it was his only uniform and he had to use it tomorrow to meet the commissioner tomorrow. The grandfather didn't want his grandson to be blamed, so he admitted that he was the one who had damaged his clothes. Neela Kanan was irritated and scolded his father for ruining his uniform. Pajam, who didn't accept his grandfather being scolded, admitted that he was the one who ruined his uniform. A big argument broke out between them. Pajam mentioned the death of his mother and sister. Neela Kanan suddenly recalled the moment before the disaster. At that time, he was driving the car while replying to messages from his boss. Pajam kept telling his father to stop using his phone. However, because the message was very important, he kept using it and eventually lost focus, leading to an accident, resulting in the death of his wife and daughter. That is what caused the relationship between Pajam and his father to not be good at this time. His grandfather advised Pajam not to blame his father, but he was too regretful with what had happened to him. He regretted surviving the accident with his father instead of losing his life, just like his mother and sister. He just couldn't forgive his father's mistake. The next day, Pajam saw his father repairing his clothes, which made him regret a little what he had done last night. While Pajam was working, he got a call from Shobana asking him to go to the hospital immediately without telling him anything. He rushed to the hospital, thinking something bad had happened to his grandfather, but it was his father who was lying weak in the hospital. The nurse told him that his father had suffered a cardiac arrest which caused paralysis on the left side of his body, but there was hope that he would recover. The next day, Neela Cannon was finally discharged. When he came home, Pajan really regretted his actions which made his father stressed and ended up like that. He asked his grandfather if his father would be okay. But his grandfather assured him that Neela Cannon would find his way to recover and not to worry about him. He had gone through worse before. The next day, Neela Cannon shouted for his father's help to go to the toilet, but he didn't come. He did this on purpose so that Pajan would understand his father's situation. Trying to walk by himself made Neela Cannon fall. In the end, Pajan, who couldn't bear to see that, came to help his father. Neela Cannon suddenly apologized to him, saying that he couldn't bear to live knowing his son hated him. Pazim, who heard this, could only remain silent and asked his father not to cry anymore. Since that incident, Pazim never ignored his father again. He even said goodbye when he left for work. After Pazim came home, his grandfather told him that his salary wouldn't cover their daily needs, especially because his father's medical bills were getting more expensive, so Pazim had to work twice as hard. Shobana blamed Pajam for quitting college just because he was annoyed with his father. She then suggested that Pajam take an equivalency test so that he could get a more decent job since he was still relatively young. Pajam finally decided to take the exam. Meanwhile, Neela Cannon asked his father's reason for not helping Pajam with his savings. He felt that he was nothing but a burden for them. But his father denied this, saying that there are times when carrying a burden is happiness and there are times when being a burden is happiness. He was lucky to have a great son like Pajam. Hearing this made Neela Cannon realize that what his father said was true, though he was suffering from paralysis, this brought back his son's love for him. His father then asked about the invitation from his in-laws. Neela Cannon said that he wasn't ready to meet his in-laws. He couldn't bear to hear the words of his in-laws who blamed him for the death of his wife and daughter, but his father told him to face the problem. The next day, Shobana and Passion were going to Hyderabad to attend an invitation from Neela Cannon's in-laws. While on the trip, his grandfather said that after this trip, her would marry Pajam because he was old enough to have a wife. He said that Pajam would definitely find his soulmate during the event. Long story short, they arrived at Neela Cannon's in-laws' house. At that time, Neela Cannon was very afraid of facing his in-laws, but to his surprise, his in-laws were happy to see him because he longed for him. This made Neela Cannon very relieved, and in the end, Pajam was able to meet his grandfather and grandmother. In the evening, Pajam's grandmother showed some family pictures. Meanwhile, Neela Cannon was talking with his father-in-law, he asked why he never visited him and thought that he was angry about his daughter's death. His father-in-law then said that he didn't want to burden him with his visit. The next day, when Neela Cannon was taking a bath, he shouted happily because he was finally able to stand again. On the other hand, Gopal was finally free from prison. 
He scouted out Neela Cannon's place. Neela Cannon's neighbor told Gopal that Neela Cannon would come back in 10 days. She told him that because she thought he was Neela Cannon's friend. Long story short, the wedding ceremony was held. To live up the event, some girls presented a dance to entertain the guests. At that time, Pajam saw a girl named Ranjani. Of the four who danced, he was the only one who didn't seem to memorize the dance moves. Her bad performance made her cry, but this instead made Pajam fall in love with her. Shobana said that Ranjani might be the one that his grandfather meant. At the temple, Shobana saw Pajam who kept glancing at Ranjani. She then encouraged him to get closer to her, so he did it. He praised her performance during the wedding ceremony, but that made her cry instead. Shobana could only laugh and say that Ranjani knew for sure that her appearance at that time was very bad and must have thought that Pajan was just making fun of her. That evening, Pajan asked his uncle to take him to Ranjani's home. When he arrived, he immediately apologized for what he had done before. After that, he then left from there. Days passed and they had to return to Delhi because the wedding was over, but Shobana couldn't find Pajan. She looked for him and found him alone. Pajam said that he didn't want to go home and still wanted to stay there with his grandparents, but Shobana didn't buy it. She knew that he wanted to stay because he couldn't stop thinking about Ranjani, so she brought her to him. Upon meeting with Ranjani, Pajam said nothing but goodbye, but Ranjani didn't seem to care that much and there was no sign of her liking Pajam. Ranjani even said that she had to leave because she was afraid that her father would be angry if he saw her talking to a man. Because of that incident, Pajam was upset. Shobana, who saw this, felt sorry for him because he failed to get a woman's heart again. When they were about to leave, Pasham's grandmother felt very sad because she had to part with him. She still wanted him to stay longer, but he had a job in the city, so he had to go. Pasham then gave her a cell phone so she could call him if she missed him. After that, they said goodbye to them. On the train, Pasham blamed his grandfather for telling him about his soulmate, which turned out to be a mistake. His grandfather then said that he was busy looking for the girl he loved while the one who loved him was there right by his side. Shobana was the one who truly understood him more than anyone else. Pajan was surprised because of this. He couldn't possibly love his own best friend. His grandfather told him to see her differently, to find the truth. Since then, he started to pay attention to Shabana. He started to realize that she was the only one who could understand him even when Pajan was about to take the exam, she prayed and supported him. Pajan then said that he wanted to talk to her after the exam but after saying that during the exam he couldn't focus because he kept thinking about her. After the exam, the two of them finally met. Pajam said that since they could share a coffee together, they could also share a life. Hearing this made Shobana speechless and responded by telling him to focus on his exam instead. At home, Pajam blamed his grandfather. Because of hearing his grandfather's words, the friendship between him and Shobana became awkward. He was embarrassed every time he met Shobana. While Shobana was confused about what really happened to Pajam that made him not want to see him again. In the evening, Pajam and his father went out together. Pajam then told him that he had expressed his love for Shobana. Hearing this, his father was surprised because since Pajan was born, he and his wife had intended to match Pajam and Shobana. Meanwhile, Shobana was very upset because Pajam didn't care about her anymore. She then remembered her promotion to Canada and decided to accept it. She immediately told his family that she would soon leave for Canada. Her family tried to forbid her, but they couldn't stop her from reaching her dream. On the way home, Pajam and his father were stopped by Gopal who was ready to attack Mila Cannon, Pajam, who saw this, tried to stop him, but Gopal instead hit Pajam with all his strength. Pajam tried his best to stop him who was about to stab Mila Cannon, until finally, using a stone, he crushed him to death. Meanwhile, Pajam was unconscious after the fight. Mila Cannon immediately called the police and Pajam was immediately rushed to the hospital. Shubana couldn't hold back her tears seeing him like that. As the days passed, Pajam was finally discharged. When they arrived, he asked his grandfather to iron his uniform because he was going to work. At that time, his grandfather wanted to tell him about Shobana who was going abroad, but Pajan was reluctant to hear anything about her again. The next day, Shobana was preparing for her departure. She then went to Pajan's house and asked Pajan's grandfather if Pajan knew she was leaving tonight, but Pajan's grandfather told her to tell Pajan herself, so she called Pajan and asked about his condition. She also told him that she was going to Canada for two years to work, but deep down she wanted Pajam to stop her because she really loved him. Pajam instead wished her a safe trip and told her that he would take Shobana to the airport. Hearing this made Shobana disappointed in Pajam. Long story short, Shobana said goodbye to leave for the airport. Meanwhile, Neela Cannon said that she wouldn't leave. On the other hand, Pajam rushed to the airport. However, because he didn't use a helmet, he was stopped by the police and his bike was confiscated. He then called Shobana to wait for him, but her plane was ready to take off so she couldn't wait for him any longer. 
Two days later, Pajun was visited by Shobana's brother who was angry and showed him the Valentine's gifts that Shobana had been saving for Pajun all this time. Since long ago, Shobana had loved him but he never looked at her that way. She was heartbroken but never told him about it because she didn't want him to worry about her. Pajun said that he realized Shobana's love and even confessed his love, but Shobana didn't return his love. It wasn't that she didn't accept his love, but she thought that his love for her was nothing more than an outlet after being rejected by two women. Hearing this, Pajam could only sit there regretting his actions. A month passed. Shobana cried when she received a call from Pajam. She regretted leaving for Canada and felt lonely, but Pajam suddenly told her to turn around. It turned out that Pajam had followed her to Canada to accompany her. Pajam realized that the two of them were meant to be a couple. Shobana felt very happy and immediately hugged him. A few days later, Pajam and Shobana finally got married. Even though it was a small ceremony, they still enjoyed it and looked very happy. Unfortunately, Pajan failed his equivalency test so he couldn't find a better job than being a delivery man. Though they were married, the fact that they had been friends for so long often made them forget that they were married, but even so, they lived a happy life together.